Yes, um, everyone, welcome again to today's meeting uh, and today's module. We are carrying out a discussion on teaching coding with Scratch. It's a professional, our inaugural professional development program that we started uh, that will be running every week for the next seven weeks, this being the second week. Just a brief of what you are able to do in the last meeting, in, in our last class. We carried out um, an introduction to Scratch, the platform, and in today's session, our trainer will take us through a discussion on what it is that uh, we can do, uh, especially on matters to do with coding, as, as we know it, introduction to coding, uh, fundamentals, not fundamentals, fundamentals. And so we'll be looking at building blocks of coding, what coding is all about, where it begins, and then from there, we'll go into various aspects of that. And then at the end of the day, because this is a teacher's class, we'll look into the teaching strategies for coding. We'll also uh, explore the, not just the teaching st uh, strategies for coding, but also assessment strategies or methods that can be used to attain um, assessment uh, for learners, but also uh, ways in which we can you know, monitor progress uh, for our learners as they continue to learn computer science or what we're getting, what we call coding. And so without much ado, allow me now to bring us our speaker. But first, we do what we always do uh, well. And this is a prayer moment, moment to just reflect on a week that has been well spent, despite the challenges that we've seen in our country and all that that we've been experiencing in the last few days. So allow me to lead us in a short prayer and then I'll introduce our trainer today and we begin from there. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for an opportunity to come together, to learn, to grow, and to get better in our endeavors as practitioners of uh, education as we know it. Thank you for an opportunity to be alive and to be safe, to be sound, and to be able to reason, even to plan to join this uh, professional development program that we set out for our Kenyan and our African teachers. We pray the Lord as we endeavor to do this, to shall hold our hand and they shall lead us in each and every step of our way, even as we grow together, become better for the greater good that you set out, uh, you set out for us. We pray the Lord as we lead us as teachers and as community members, that we shall be glorified in everything. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much once again for being here. It's always a pleasure to host you and to be with you. For those who are joining at this moment, I've just done a recap of the last session that we did with our very own leader and um, a trainer or professional learning specialist, Mr. Timothy Ndia, Andiwa, who took us through the introduction of Scratch. And in today's session, in the second module today, we will delve into the next aspect of this course, and we are calling it building blocks of coding, uh, exploring the fundamentals of coding and breaking it down for the teachers who will go ahead and establish STEAM clubs, digital literacy classes, computer science classes in their schools and in their community. So welcome on board. With me here, our amazing leaders, begin with is our very own leader, um, professional learning specialist, Mr. Joel Kahindi. Mr. Joel, you will say a word, just a hi as we begin. Hey, Felix, and uh, good evening, everyone. Okay, my name is Joel, and uh, happy to be here. Uh, looking forward to a fruitful session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joel. Um, we now move very quickly to um, our leader who took us through the session, the last session. That is Mr. Timothy Ndewa. Timothy. Thanks, Felix. Hi, everyone. Good evening from you know, all over the world. Uh, welcome back to session two. It's nice to see to see you guys back. So we're looking forward um, to this also very engaging session. We had an engaging one um, last week. And so we are building on to that, um, and we hope that you guys can be able to get something out of this second session. So, karibu sana. Amazing. Thank you, Tim. Um, 
I'd like to let you know that uh, in our team, we are also organized in such a way that our domain work is handled well. The people reaching out to you via emails, communicating what is happening, etc, etc. <laughs> we have our communication specialists in charge of this program and that of students, uh, Ms. Justina. Justina, you can just say hi to the team, uh, to the teachers. As Jacina gets that mic in the interest of time, allow me to um, I will still introduce her in the course of the time. Um, in the in the course or uh, in, in this particular session, I will be able to introduce her later on. But at this moment, allow me to introduce you guys to our trainer of our session today, our very own leader from East Africa uh, within Eastern African community, East African community that is ESC, all the way from Kampala our leader and our trainer, Edith Dagire. Edith, I um, think her computer sometimes has challenges the camera. You may not be able to see her, but uh, we will be here to support her and to see you, to see her through, as she takes her through our session today. Building blocks of coding with our very own Edith Dagire. Welcome on board, Edith. Thank you, Felix. Um, can you hear me? Yes, clearly we can hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, pardon me today, I'm not putting on the camera uh, due to the background, but uh, hopefully uh, we have this together and I'm um, very excited. And yeah, I hope everyone is fine and thanks to everyone for joining in. Uh, we, I'm Edith Nagre and I'm from Kampala, Uganda. I'm going to be your to your trainer today and uh, hope everyone is hearing me right yes we can hear you please proceed okay so since i've seen uh we have uh godfrey we have said jilo weekly we have uh different people have uh mentioned their names and where they are from in the chat uh i think with the interest of time we shall get started and thank you felix for the introduction um let me hope uh from the last time uh i will uh prefer maybe if people raise up their hands like do we all have uh scratch our scratch interfaces open did we create our scratch um that and also do, do we also get the offline editors maybe if for those who manage to get the offline editors and do we have accounts do we all have scratch accounts uh we can just raise the hand up there we can use this or oh, mention in the chat that yes we have them Okay. Alice says she doesn't have scratch account yet. And good for created one. So good for uh could you uh since you have one, could you kindly share with us how you created one so that Alice can have her account still. Good for your sweetie. Are you going to help us share that? Share with us how you created your account. Okay, I've joined and uh, who says I missed the first one? Uh, Godfrey Rusway team says they created an account. So is it okay if you share with us how you created one or oh, I can get it done? Okay, so for Alice and for those who haven't created one, I'm going to share my screen. Entire screen and uh, 
Okay. Uh, can everyone see? Is everyone able to see my screen? Is everyone able to see yes, my screen? Yes, we can okay, see it. Okay, so yes. well, people like Alice who have created one, probably you're going to start with a scratch at mit.edu on your browsers. Let me hope everyone is seeing this. So I already have an account. So uh, if you put in this, you would be able to get to let me see. Uh, the create. Sorry, out. Sign out. Okay, so Alice, uh, I hope you can see this interface. We have Scratch here. We have the Create here, Exploring Ideas About, but we also have Join Scratch here. So for those who have no account, you can as well get to this tab and click on it. And hope everyone has in mail as a teacher. So when we get to this point, uh, we need to click on the join scratch and create uh you're going to get to your username whatever username you'd like to use and also get your own password and click next so today we are creating uh let me say my name is dean so here i give my password dean is already taken okay dean one Wow. And your own password. Uh, yeah. Alice, uh, we should get done with this. Um, so next. Shouldn't put below six characters. So, Junior, stupid. Lala kipia kwa kwa mo lala kitchen kaka yu. Talk about. You choose your country. I think I will be able to put Kenya. Oh, Kenya. And then next, you put, you just follow the procedure. Month, uh, probably Jan and uh, maybe 2010. And you choose your own gender. I could choose to be male since I'm Dean. And your email, then you create your account. And for those who already have their accounts, you can as well just open your accounts and sign in. So let me hope Alice, you're fine with that. Okay, so let me hope everyone has their accounts ready. And uh, Alice, uh, okay, she's almost there. So today we are looking at uh, view. Our second module is uh, building blocks of coding. So I'm going to share with you my screen again and. Uh, we are going to have hands on. In case of any question, just raise up your hand or we'll get into the chat. Uh, my teammates, uh, Tim and uh, Joel plus Felix, will be able to help out in case I can't see the chats because I'm going to be sharing my screen. Okay, I'm sharing the screen.
Okay, so this is our second module and welcome everyone. Uh, this is going to be helping us to know more and uh, let's get to let's get started uh, building blocks of coding. And um, so this is it is taking you through and I'm going to be your trainer for today's module. So today's session, the main objectives are uh, we are going to get to know the importance of mastering fundamental coding concepts as trainers and also be looking at these key blocks, the events, the loops, the conditionals and the variables. So, and uh, we shall also be able to learn the effective teaching strategies and also ensuring how students grasp these foundational principles as trainers, because we are here to learn and also help others to learn. So why are the fundamental concepts um, important? I'm going to take you through this as others are preparing their screens and also getting ready with their accounts. Uh, so we need to understand um, why do we do this and why do we even have to learn this? Uh, to provide a strong foundation in programming as trainers. And as a trainer, you also need to have the foundation, yes, but then you still have to have the passion of doing that. So serve as a building blocks uh, for creativity. And also you need to have these tools to solve problems. And also as you're training these children, or these learners, or any student, you need to sh guide them through so that they can be able to solve their problems, whatever problem they come up with in their communities, in their areas, in their societies. So this will be able to help them out and also uh, promoting collaboration as programmers. I can effectively communicate their ideas, work together on different projects, and also learners unlock the power to create, innovate, <coughs> and also tackle the reward challenges. So in this, we are having these concepts as trainers, but also we need to push this down to the other learners so that we can help the country at large and also be problem solvers. So let me hope everyone has their account ready, their editors ready. So today we are getting our our hands dirty, like we are doing hands on as you see this guy getting their computer and the keyboard just happy as you can see. I guess their faces are putting on a smiley thingy. So that's so we get started. So as trainer, as um, I'm going to be, okay, now this is going to, I like an interactive class. So probably we're going to unmute ourselves. As we've opened those editors, have we seen these? Um, how do I? Okay, so as we are starting to do the scratching and all that, if we open our editors, we can we are able to see this. Um, as we have this on our screens, I guess everyone can see my screen. Let's click on create. Because when you get to create, this is helping you get to that editor. But when you want to explore different ideas, different projects, you get to click on the explore tab and also get different ideas from different people. So since we are trying to get our hands dirty, I'm going to create a, a click on the create tab so that we can see what I'm talking about. So as we get to see, uh, as we are scratching, because right now we are scratching, is everyone able to see this on their screen? Screen, sorry, on their tabs, their new browsers. Okay, I need one, yes. Uh, team, is anyone uh, responding in the chat? Yes, please. Yes, yes. Okay, so as we are trying to do the scratching, are we able to see this editor? Yes, and also we need to understand what are we looking at? Yes, we are going to, our main aim is going to be about the variables, events, the loops, and the, yeah, variables, events, loops, and the conditionals. But we need to understand what are we dealing with? 
So when we open this editor, realize we are seeing one big cut here. And this is going to, this is a sprite. We need to understand, yes, this is a sprite, but then what is a sprite? It is this character we are going to use it in Scratch. And also we have this code area where you can see different blocks. As you can see, my cut moving. We have the motion, we have the looks, we have the sound, we have the events, we have the control. These are all blocks in, in Scratch and they help us do whatever project we want to talk about, we want to do. Whatever thing you want to come up with, whatever game you want to create, these blocks help you out. And also we have this area of costumes where you can have different costumes of different sprites and also the sounds. So our main focus today is to look at the variables, the events, the loops. So as you can see these, I do want to start off with the slides without showing you this. We have this coding area where we shall be moving our blocks and everything. And also we have this palette where you see this sprite located. I can move it with my cursor. So this is the palette that's going to be this is like your solution area, but then this is where you work out from. So this is like your paper, the palette, where you work out from. So when we get back to the slides, <clears throat> here we have, uh, as, as you can see from your browsers, we have the events shown here, but then we need to understand. As you look, um, as from whatever I've shown you, uh, let's try to look for where I can get the repeat and the forever because right now we are talking about the loops. Uh, remember loops um, allow you to have the repetitive execution of your code. So uh, when you look at the repeats and the forever, have, has anyone located them? These two blocks. A yes or a no. Hello. Has anyone located the repeats under forever? Lama is saying I can't yes. Hear you. You've located them. Okay, from the chat edit, uh Christine is saying yes, Lomo is saying yes, but Ali is oh, saying okay. no so and Godfrey. Okay, so for those who are saying no, uh, could we look at our coding area where we can see? Because uh, right now we are looking at the loops. So, oh, sorry. Did I stop sharing? So, some sound here. Okay, now. Yes, Julius, your hand is up. Okay, for those who can't my, see that, yes. My, my my chat icon is uh, not active. I don't know why. Uh, team, kindly work upon that. Or oh, Joel, Felix. Okay, for those who aren't able to see, uh, we are going to work on that for your chat, Julius. Okay, for those who can't sketch the forever and the repeat, let's look at the code area where we have different blocks. We have motion, look, sound. So you can locate where there is control. Where there is control, you will be able to find the repeat and the forever. So in this case, I'm talking about the loops. These loops are um, programming techniques which allow you to have blocks of code repeatedly executed in your program. As you can see, we have the, have, we've all uh, gotten engaged with the flowcharts and everything. You know, you normally have the start and also where you have um, the stop. So probably the loops help you have the count controlled loops. 
and also have the condition controlled loops and also the continuous loops. So when we look at this, we have the repeat and the forever. In this case, uh, forever, it's uh, let's try out something. Let me hope we all have our sprite cut and we have a forever block here. So let's get to motion and try to move this cut. Um, probably let me make it uh, forever turn these degrees. So when I click this, you realize it's going to turn. Is everyone's sprite doing that? Just try out this simple code. Are we there? Yes. Okay, in this case, we're having a continuous loop. In this, uh, the facilities uh, for these continuous loops, the blocks are executed, like it's a forever thing. It's not stopping. It's not even uh, having a limited time or a number. So when I stop it, I'll click on it and I stop it. So here I'll still do the same for the repeat and bring this. But in this case, it's going to be a count controlled loop because it's going to repeat. Uh, it's going to repeat 10. Uh, let me just put repeating uh, probably yeah, 10 times. So when I click on it, you see, it's like after the 10 times, it stopped. So that's a count controlled loop with um, with a specific number of times. But then this one is a continuous loop. So when we talk about a condition controlled loop, in this we shall be able to bring in a condition that probably if I say after this, uh, you know, let me first stop this. Uh, before we go for the condition controlled loop, uh, let me hope we have a difference now between a count controlled loop and also a continuous loop. If I make it a uh, hundred, it will stop after the hundred time, like yeah, till the hundredth time. You see, after the hundredth time, it stopped. But when I get to the continuous loop, to do it forever without stopping. So before we, uh, I want to show you how to have the con conditional controlled loop. So here in this case, uh, before we get to that, uh, we shall have to know more about the conditional statements. Is everyone okay with this? Uh, are we all able to differentiate between these two? The controls here. So when we get yes, to the yes. conditions, okay. So the conditions make decisions for us. So I'll give you an example. At home there, you have a bulb. So you whether you when you want to know whether the power is on or off you'll be able to first switch it on and off. When you switch it on and power is not on, that's when you know that, yeah, okay. So when the bulb doesn't light, that's when you know that the power is off. But when the bulb lights, you know the power is on. The same thing with uh, you thinking about whether, you thinking about your weather and if it's cold, then you wear a jacket or a rain, uh, a sweater. And if it's hot, you don't wear it. You just wear, wear a light dress or a light shirt. So you just have to use, as you're doing these conditionals, you think of your daily day life, what you go through. Maybe in the morning, if the alarm, actually when the alarm makes, um, when clocks five, when you set your alarm to get on or at five, that's when you know that, yeah, when it clocks. So we shall look at these conditional loops here. If it's if the if it clocks five, the alarm is on. So in this case, I'll look at a let's have a, a game right now. We are now starting to work out. Let me hope uh, everyone has this. Uh, 
let's have this game started. Uh, we are going to have a racing cut. So, though I need feedback from people, I don't know why I like interactive classes. I don't want to talk alone. Anyone to just uh, think about, uh, we're going to have a racing cut, but in this case, uh, we need to have, what is this cut going to chase? Anyone with any idea? Hello. I really want us to learn these things as we are doing, uh, as we are having examples. I don't want to talk and talk. So, Alice, let me just recall the names now. Alice, are you there? Godfrey, I remember Godfrey. Okay, I can't get back to the names, but yeah. Alice, Alice saying oh. she's there. Edit Alice is saying is there. Okay, so we are having this game, a racing cut, but then we need to know what is this cut going to chase. So in my opinion, let me choose a mouse. So we all know where to, okay, now we need to understand. We have this area here where you can choose a sprite. Let me hope everyone can see my screen. But then we have where we can choose this sprite. At the same time, you can paint your own sprite and also the background. So before we get to the chasing cut, I really love this painting thing. You can draw your own uh, sprite. <clears throat> I can draw my own sprite using the paintbrush. And in case I want to erase it, I use the eraser. I can draw uh, anything in form of a rectangle and draw anything in form of a circle. So whatever thing you want to do, you can go ahead and do it. But if you don't want it, and in case you want to delete that, you just have to do this. Let me hope everyone is comfortable with this. Uh, we have where you show and then hide. In this case, if I want to hide that sprite, you can just click this and hide. I want it to be shown. And also, um, let me choose another sprite from whatever is stored here, and I'll search for it. I guess I'll choose a mouse. I'm going to have a chasing game. And I don't want my mouse to look so big, so I come here on the size and reduce it. If I reduce it to 50, maybe it will be a bit smaller. So in this case, I have the chaser who is sprite one, the cut. And also I have this other person. who is being chased, it's a runner. So before we get to the condition, of course, I wanted us to learn more about the conditions. So in this case, I'm going to, uh, the conditional loop is going to be between the mouse and the cat. So if in this case, um, I, want, I want you guys to be engaged in this. So I need you to unmute yourselves this one for once what do you think we are going to look for because we have motions in this they help the sprite to move in whatever direction they want we have the looks in this you change whatever like whatever look you want it to have like now for this sprite here you can change its costume if i click on it you see it looks as if it's running it has changed its uh costume if I click on it again, it goes back to what? Costume one, it goes back to the other costume where it's seen as if it's moving, sorry, walking. So if I want it to move, um, let me still use our block here. OK, 
okay and also i have a waiting block here where i can do this so when i do this you see this not moving i've just told it to just do this remember you program it to do what you want it to do just a, so if i do wait for probably two minutes Sorry, two seconds. You can still not see the effect that much. So. Still the same thing. So I want it to move. Move 10 steps. So these are all loops, like this is showing you how it can be, but then you're not telling it to move baby forward, all that. So when I tell it to move alone without all these, realize if I say probably 40 steps, it just skips, right? Did you see that? When I do move 40, it doesn't seem like it's moving. So we need to work upon that. So as we are trying to do this chasing game, we're going to make it move in different, um, in this case, we are going to have, let me share with you the slides again. We've really skipped this. So this is saying chasing game, we have one sprite which will move randomly around the screen. And also the other one will be controlled by you, the user. So, we get back to our coding. Now we have started. So before we get to the events and all that, when we are looking at the cat is done chasing this mouse. So what, what do you think the mouse is going to do? If we say that cat is going to be moving randomly, uh, we're going to do this and clean our thing. Can we also do the right click and then clean up all blocks. They'll clean themselves without you doing it. Let me hope you you saw that. I do right click, then clean up the blocks or add a comment because you know programmers need to comment uh, in your code. And also undo if I want to undo, but in this case I wanted it to clean up this. So since if I want it to move randomly, I'll be able to go <coughs> and tell it to do whatever I want it. So probably I will either we tell it to go to random position or line to random position, whatever you choose. So we're going to have this both. We have that. And at the same time, I can duplicate this. You just right click on this, duplicate it if you don't want to get back there. So we also have glide here. When you want to go make it move or do any motion, you go to the motion blocks. Let me hope everyone is there. So when I tell it to do go to random position, I guess you can see what's happening on my screen. Right? But if I tell it to forever glide to random position, you see it's gliding. Like it's not just moving at a faster rate. So there is a difference between you getting to this point of cha 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 and also gliding. Let's all get this right. So we need to work on our game now. Let me hope everyone has their chaser and runner, right? Me, I have a cat as my chaser and I have a runner as the mouse. So what do we all have? Do we have that or oh, we've chosen different sprites? Because they have different sprites here you can choose from. You can choose from animals, from people. So who is your chaser? Who is your runner? There are a lot of animals here you can choose from. 
could choose a someone could choose a shark whatever shark you want and also someone could choose a shark and what what happens down the in the water down there so we have fish If what could the shark be chasing fish? So I could have these chase each other. So uh, the shark could be my chaser and the fish could be my what? My runner. And I could also make it a little bit smaller, probably 70. So whatever you choose, whatever sprite you choose, you can have the chaser as your shark and the fish as your runner. In this case, what background do you think we shall choose if you are choosing a shark? It would be, okay, now I'm thinking out um, loud. I think it would be water and water. So let me first hide this right here. Show you something. So if I have the shark and the fish, in this case, the, the runner is the fish and the shark is the chaser. So I'll go and make my shark move randomly. So I'm making my shark move randomly. You see that? So my runner here, a fish, I want it to move by me controlling it. So me, I, if I say me, it means you, the person controlling your game. You the one creating it. So we shall be choosing different scripts for it to move maybe up, down, left, or uh, trying to avoid the shark. So if the shark is trying to move that way, uh, we are going to get our, so we get to our vets here. Let me hope everyone has seen this. And before we get to the events, if we say we are going to make it move up and down, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, we are going to move up and down. So I wanted us to have an engagement here. Uh, team, uh, is there any query or questions from the chat, Joel? Mm, okay, Lucas has uh, his hand up. Don't yes, know. my hand has been up. Pardon? trying to catch up with you, but you seem to be fast. I'm trying to reduce the size of my sprite. I've chosen a panther, but it's too a big. Panda. You want to reduce panther, panther. Okay. Okay. Now, um, Lucas. Yes. If I want to reduce the size of anything, uh, let's get back to this. Now, let me say the fish here. I have um size here. You can see where we have show. In this case, I said show. If I click on this eye crossed, it will hide. But if I click this one, it will show. And if I want to reduce the size, I can yes. also go here. Are we together, Lucas? I can reduce it to whatever size I want. From here. Yes. And also if I want the direction to change, I can change it from here. And all the positions, this is X and Y. Okay, now I get you. Okay, so that's why I wanted us to have that interaction. If I'm very fast to, because I, I move this way, because thinking uh, you guys are already there. 
so uh, everyone is at par. And you can also change uh, your background. Okay, so probably let me use the cat and mouse. Hide the shark. It's going to be visible. So the mouse, we are trying to move it up and down. So in this case, we are going to use uh, X axis, Y axis. Well, I hope everyone knows this. Like when you're moving up and down, that is a vertical axis. So that would be the Y, right? So I'll be able to bring, I'll be able to go to motion and look for the Y and the X blocks. This is going to help us move them. So in this case, working, uh, we are trying to work upon a runner because want him or her to run from left, right, or down, up, something like that same time x axis so remember x axis deals with us moving horizontally and y axis is moving vertically so when we get to the controls here sorry the event shall be able to get this um i hope everyone's keyboard is uh, working and performing so we shall be able to get this so if you are moving uh right arrow. <clears throat> i guess we shall be moving on the positive side of your x-axis and then here we shall be moving up on the right um positive side of your y-axis so as i mentioned earlier you can duplicate this so that because you know programmers uh they always tell us that we are good at this you just have to do right click and duplicate this and also right click and duplicate this. Are we there? So in this case, we are trying to work on the X axis here. We have the right and left. Remember horizontal axis has right and left moving horizontally. Then Y axis we have up and down. But then if you try to click on this, when you try to press your arrows on your keyboard and say left, they will still move in the right direction, right? It you're moving left. So what we need to do is <clears throat> change this to negative. Just come and say negative 10. And then for the down arrow, it's also negative 10. <coughs> to differentiate that too. So realize when you use the right axis, sorry, you start here and you say uh, move the arrows up, that is moving up, down, left, and then right. Who has noticed something? You see I'm moving in, on the right side of my horizontal, but then <clears throat> things are not working out. So I need to also change the position, uh, sorry, the mouse is not looking up or down it's in one what? Direction, so I need to change its direction. So we come back here and choose this point in direction. So if I say left and uh, I want it to move this side, that is left. So it will look this side. Where is my left? Left here. Yeah. Okay. Ready? So up, that is zero.
down, move it down. So if I try to use my arrows again, I'll see it will face up. Okay, now this is roof. Right. Left, yeah. So you see it is following your arrows. Is everyone's mouth doing that? Or your chest, uh, sorry, your runner? Is your runner following your arrows? Is everyone's runner following the arrows? Because my runner is following the arrows. Anything from the chat? Okay, editor. Seeing uh, nothing from the chat, but uh, Lucas is still raising the hand. Uh, yes, Lucas. Oh, I, uh, I just forgotten to lower it. But we are good. Okay, so let me hope everyone's uh, runner is following their arrows. So I guess we are done with the runner. So we need to get back to our chaser. What is our chaser trying to do? So we go back to the, you click on it and click on it from here on your palette. So when you come back here, we look at these events here. You know, events are these blocks that trigger that. <coughs> They, they trigger and also that initiate actions in coding. Whenever I say uh, when green flag click, it's like I'm starting my game. You know how we have a start and stop? We have a green flag here and we have a stop button here. So when I say when green flag is clicked, let it move, glide randomly. So when I say that, you realize my, uh, my chest is going to glide randomly like that but when i click stop it will stop let me hope everyone has done that also like try to do that you can also try to use the other event block that is uh when sprite is clicked so that means when i click on the cut it will forever do that when i say when sprite is clicked so these events are the ones that trigger your actions and everything like they help you start the program or your project. So uh, allow me remove these because we are trying to work uh, on our. So let me hope we've all chosen this so that it can move in random positions. So when I do this and uh, use my uh, my arrows to probably run away from it so we are going to have the conditions now so this is where the condition is going to come from uh, about where we mentioned that we need to have a uh, conditional loops like if this is touched i get to this if this is chosen i get to this so in this case we want a reaction when the chaser catches the runner what happens when the chaser catches the runner. So here it will require us to have the if loop and the sensing palette. So we are going to look for the sensing ones here. So before we go there, we need to look for our if. So if, let me hope everyone is here. You can see the sensing blocks, if touching mouse pointer. But in this case, it's just the chaser touches the runner and our runner is the mouse mouse one here i can change the name actually i forgot to show you show you this i can change the name here to runner and also my sprite one to chaser we hope everyone can see this I decided not to do that earlier, but now let us do that. You can change it to whatever name you want. 
Mine is Chesa and Rana. So when I come to Chesa and trying to do this, I'll have to look for Rana. So if touching Rana, what happens? What should happen? What do you think should happen? Uh, let me hope uh, everyone is at par. Uh, what will happen? Let me see. Uh, let's choose backdrops. So if they are rotating within this backdrop, and if one touches the other, let the backdrops change. So as I mentioned, we can always have different backdrops. So I'll look for probably a sitting room where they will be chasing themselves. Rooms, rooms, rooms. Okay, let me choose room two. I can't see my mouse very well in this room. Can choose another thing. Bedroom one. See, it has a lot of. So you see, if you um, you can choose from whatever thing you want, and uh, probably let me choose the city. Now, what do you think we can choose? Everyone choose whatever background you want. Um, um, probably the house because they're always inside the room. Okay, and bedroom too. So my chesa. <clears throat> I have switch backdrop to bedroom too. Okay. So what happens right now? Um, it is room two. Okay. If I have room two, and then when I click on this and I say if touching runner, choose uh, I have to change to backdrop two. <clears throat> Sorry, bedroom two. I'll have to see that, <clears throat> but we need to put it somewhere to show that. So where is that? We're going to add our code here. So it will be more gliding to whatever position it wants. But then when it touches the mouse, it changes to bedroom T. Hope everyone saw that. So to see that very well, you can already set your backdrop in the first place. You see where we have backdrops, they're in the loop blocks. So you switch this backdrop first to room two. So when you click your green flag here, room two will show. When it touches the mouse, it will change the backdrop. So that happened. But then, does it still have to glide or we have to give another <coughs> condition? What condition do you think we can give it? The chaser will send out a broadcast when it touches the runner. So in this case, we are going to try out and say, probably when it touches uh, the runner, switch to bedroom two and stop. We can stop everything. And you see where we have stop in our control. These control blocks help you do whatever you want. You can make it to wait, repeat, forever. All these are controlling blocks. So I can stop it immediately after it has switched to back to bedroom too. So I'm going to show you that also. Let me hope everyone's chaser is doing what's supposed to do and everyone's runner is doing what's supposed to do.
about quote it. So does everyone have this? Does your runner get to your chaser? Charts, charts, charts. Let me check from the charts. How do we undo movement of the sprite? Okay. How we undo the movement? You can always remove it or you can always undo from here. You right click on that specific sprite you want to undo, and then you undo whatever you want. Or you can always come here. In the edit and this is when you had deleted a sprite you can always restore a sprite but then you can always save your work for people who have desktops what you can always save your work whatever you want you can also save your work as a copy and also you can load whatever you want for yourself to your computer so right now before we get to any point any other do we have any questions? Yes, Stefan, uh, you said on your side nothing was moving. Does it still not move at this time? Stefan? Is it okay if everyone can unmute themselves? Christine, uh, Mary? Emmanuel, are we at pa? No. Hello. Yes, I'm um, think it's stuck somewhere. Yes, just but where exactly? Yeah, you, you know, I can get the flight, you can get my my chaser, then but then I can't Move them. I think there's a place where you move a bit, a bit faster if you can repeat. And where exactly? Uh, on the movement? Yes, on the movements because I can get the okay, two. Okay, let me. Please do. Okay. So let us use the shark here. So um, where exactly? Is your runner not moving? It does, but now I can't. After that, I can't command when I uh, when I click, it can move, but I can't. Okay. Yeah, get it where it can reach the my. Yes, yes but is it okay if you share your screen? I don't know. I I can't manage at the moment because I'm using oh. uh, to oh, I'm using my laptop, so it's give me a challenge. Okay, so um. From what you've mentioned, probably they are not moving according to your motions, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay, and it also depends on your runner. Who is your chaser? I have a dog and a sprite. And a cat, right? Yeah. So that dog is trying to chase the cat. Yes. Okay, so in this case, your dog is my chaser, which is the cat here. Do you also have this kind of same coding here on my screen for your chaser? No, that's why I need you to repeat kind. Oh, okay, it's okay. Let us come. Uh, we can also do that together. So uh, let's move this down. As I mentioned earlier, we have what we call the events. These they trigger your actions, whatever you're starting to do. Whatever you're trying to do, you always start from this area, probably. You always have to come and get when green flag is clicked, when space is clicked, sorry, pressed, uh, when this sprite is clicked, when this backdrop changes. So in this case, we are trying to say, um, we are trying to move our chaser. So this is the code for our chaser. We are trying to say, um, Control. So if you have this, you can be like forever. 
our chaser is going to do glide. So we have two options. We can say go to a random position or we can glide to that position, to the random position. You see, when I say glide, before I add it there, you realize it moves on its own pace, right? But then when I say go to, it will just add this, like as if it's a ghost, disappears and appearing at the same time. So we need it to uh, happen, like um, be seen as if it's real. So we have to just put the glide position here, the glide block. So when you do this, it will forever glide, as you can see. Is your dog doing this also? Okay, so then we came to the conditions where we said, um, we need to use the conditional blocks. In this case, you are trying to do, um, trying to make decisions for your program. You make it possible for it. You test it, like you check whether it's true or false. You check whether it's working upon whatever you want it to do, or it's stopping to condition whatever way you're trying to put it. So in this case, that's when you come up with a control code if. Let me stop it here. Yeah. So if I have and say if, actually before I add it there, if it touches here, touching will go to sensing blocks here. And the sensing blocks have different touches. You have the touching uh, mouse pointer, we have touching color. In this case, we have also key pressed. These are conditional blocks. As you can see, conditional blocks are normally in the diagonal form. As I mentioned earlier, like we've all engaged with uh, flowcharts. Realize flowcharts have different uh, shapes. Uh, we have the start shape, that's like and a rectangle, but has circular point edges. Yeah, curvy edges. And also we have the rectangles there. We have the condition. So the conditional blocks are always the diagonal ones, as you can see, even the shape here. Good uh, for the good of it, uh, Scratch shows you whatever you need to do. Like you see, you realize the conditional block is a rectangular, um, sorry, diagonal. So you look for the diagonal thing that's like this, sorry, and add it here. So in this case, our, <clears throat> in this case, your runner is the cut. So you point it out that way get your runner but we said what happens if i want my runner to <clears throat> if they touch my runner what happens so me i said uh switch back to to bedroom two so whatever backdrops you chose let me hope lucas you chose your own backdrops there are a lot of backdrops you can choose from here and you can also give it a different idea. If it touches, let maybe let it back. Or let it say something. You can always come here and say, uh, if it touches runner, let's say uh, it will say, I got you. Or it backs. In this case, you get to the sound and start um, the sound of the dog. But in this case, my chaser is a what? Is a cat, so it will just say meow, right? So I add my code here. Let me just move the mouse to touch it. Oh God. You see? But it didn't stop. Oh, you didn't hear the sound. It said meow. We hope my audio is loud enough. So, for me to see the outcome very well and the uh, solution, I always stop my code so that I can see what happens. Yes, after saying meow, what happens? I got you, said. 
it said I got you and then said meow, then stopped. So this is the condition I'm trying to give it now. I'm telling it, if you touch runner, say I got you and start meow. You can tell it to meow, whatever sound it is, uh, like play the meow until it's done and remove the start here. So you can tell your dog to bark. See, it said I got you and meow. Did you hear that, Lucas? Yes, I did. Okay, and is your dog uh, responding to your code? And let me just um, ask others, uh, Emmanuel, uh, Christine, we have Mary, uh, Juma, Alice, and can I can see everyone? Let me see here. Mm -hmm, I have the names here. Faith, um, Godfrey, Jess Fat, Juma, just, uh, Justine is part of us, Leah, Lomo, are we at PA? Mine is working very well, okay. We have some positive. So is everyone's uh, code working perfect according to whatever I wanted to have? Whatever program you're trying to give it. I want us to get to the variables to see the gist of it. You see, always uh, we have a uh, loser and a uh, winner. So most cases, the games we have, they are always scores. Even if they are playing your old Candy Crush, you always see that whenever you're playing, whatever game you're doing, or even if it's, yeah, even if it's football, you guys watch four matches. Whenever you score, you get a point. So in this case, we are going to try to look at the variables before, because we are, yes, anyone saying something? Okay, so you see we have done all this. Uh, my my chest is saying meow. I tried to use the backdrops earlier, but now I changed it to meow. Like you can always tell a computer what to do. You program it, you tell it what you want. So in this case, we're going to look at the variables. I'll take you back to my slides. So we are done with our chasing game. So here we have the variables. I guess you can all check on your editors and see where you have variables down there. So we are looking at the variables right now. When you click on the variable blocks, you'll be able to see this where you have make a variable and they always have their own, that is my variable that comes with scratch, but can always change that name. Uh, we all know a variable is a value that is not constant and it changes every time. So what you're going to have today, you have a variable there, but can always set your variable, can always change your variable, you can always show a variable and you can always hide your variable. Scratch gives you all those options for you to enjoy your pro your projects as you're working with them. Like, so we are going to go back to that game of ours, but before we go back to the game, let's enjoy um, more about variables. So when you look here, you see they're in the orange color still here. We have my variables here. Let me hope everyone has seen those variables. They're under operators. We have operators there, but we have variables here. So if my sprite, uh, my chaser says, and to remind you all, these are all sprites. These are all sprites. So I just uh, called my sprite a chaser and a runner. 
So if my sprite chaser catches runner, I told it to say I got you and then play sound meow and stop. But then in this case, I'm trying to change the, that idea. I want it to show me something. I want to know whether I'm losing, whether I'm winning, something like that. So here we are going to draw our own points. So we are going to draw our own sprites. I'm going to paint my own sprite right now. And I'll just say, um, type it. Oh, I just do the text here. You win. Then I'll have another sprite. Which I'll write you rules. Let me hope everyone is here. Not moving faster. I have um you win and you lose. I have two sprites I've created. This win, let me call it win. I can even increase its size from here. So I'll be able to hide them first and then show them. So we are going to deal with that. Let me first delete the shark and fish because I'm not using them at the moment. So sprite two is uh, you lose. So Do we all have those two sprites? You win and you lose. So we are getting back here. We are trying to create variables for our sprites. Are we at par? Or do I stop? Charts, just how do we save a project? I'm on and off because of network. Well, I'm sure catch up, but would request you to share the slide for further follow up. Okay, we shall share the slides. How do you save a project? Yes, I know our network is not that good. But I mentioned you can always save our work from here. You can file, save now. You see, when I save my project, it's saved. And also, I can save to my computer here. Or as long as I change the name here, the moment you come here and change your name of the project, it will save automatically. But mine is saved already. This is Salim. Salim, hope you can now save your work very well. Okay, Stefan says it's getting off due to power. And yes. How did you rename your sprite? Uh -huh. You rename the sprite from here. You come to sprite and click here and change the name. Mm. 
this point here, you can always change your name with a sprite. That is Julius, hope you can do that now. Yes. Okay. So do we start with our variables? Right now we are trying to create variables. So uh, here you create your variable. So I'm going to call my variable score. If I want it, for all, we normally have a local variable and a global variable. So global variable is uh, for all, like it's usually the whole things. Uh, you can see how we say uh, globally, or you can mention global, that's when you know that it's from more than one thing. But then if I say local variable, that's when I say it's for only this sprite only. But in this case, we are dealing with both. So we have for all sprites, okay. So it is, when I click, when I want to hide it, I will have to come here. Let me hope everyone is seeing this and untick this. It will not show on your palette here. Sorry, on your screen. But if I say, if I click on it and have this tick, it will be able to show here. So here we are trying to do a thing now. So if I say I have a score, I'll have to set score to zero in the start, right? Let me hope everyone can see that. In this case, I'm trying to set it to zero. And if I score, so in this case, I'll be like, if touching runner, I got you, let me change my variable to one. Then it continues to play. I'm going to remove the stop all first and we see what happens. So let me first hide this. You win and you lose. We are hiding that first, but we shall show it later because we need to see this all together. So what happens when it touches the mouse? You see what happened? It didn't change anything. And you know why? Our score didn't change anything. Anyone to say something? Why? Hello. Go back to the chat. Mm -hmm. Uh, Leah asks, can I create a sprite in a different language and make it talk in Swahili, for example? Okay, now Leah, let me show you that. Um, you see, we've not got into that area, but you can always type whatever you want in this. Saying blocks, it's you to type whatever you want. But if you want it to speak, that's when we shall be able to get to this extension here and get the text to speech. Maybe we shall see that later. But Scratch has its own inbuilt languages. We shall be glad if Swahili is part of those languages. But for typing here, I can always type whatever I want. If I come here and type whatever I want. So I need uh, answers. Uh, anyone knows why? our score didn't change it is because of this when i say change my variable remember we have score not my variable so we need to also change this to score let me hope everyone has changed that also so that you cannot find errors in your code this is debugging and all that you hear people say i'm debugging my code such errors happen you have written your nice code but there is this one error you've stayed with 
So we need to change that. So we run it again. As you're running your mouse up and down. Expect the cut. Ah, he got me. So the score changed to one. Did you see that? So if it catches again, it still gets to score two. But we need something else. We need to show our var and in this case she created a variable score. As you can see. But what happens? We just keep on playing, adding scores and all that. Right? So we need to ask it, or we need to program it to do something. So in this case, you have created a variable called score. Let me hope everyone has a variable being created now. Any chat? Anyone to say something? I can unmute yourself. You can go through the chat. Emmanuel, edit. Emmanuel is. Is there a ways? Is there ways you can do to make both the chess and run move at the same time? Okay, now. Emmanuel, uh, the chaser is going to chase the runner. So in this case, it's you to program it to do what it wants. So if you want it to be following them, like the runner, so we shall be able to change that main. So we come here and try to change. This is an example from what Emmanuel has asked. Uh, we can always say uh, move. We come here forever, though that will not be a game because you're trying to run away from the chaser. But you can always say um, point probably towards the runner. After pointing towards there. First, you go to the run or glide to the run. I like it when I use glide because it shows me what it does like now, that motion. So you see, it does that. Like you tell it to point towards it, but then at the same time, you glide towards whatever it is. You can also skip out the point. And just say blind to the run. So in this case, the runner was try to run away to get, but still follow it. Did you see? Did you see that, Emmanuel? Wherever the, uh, the runner goes, it comes. So you can also do that, right? Let me hope it has answered your question, Emmanuel. Yes, okay. You always have you always tell the computer what to do. You always program what you want it to have. So in this case, um I think I'm going to since we are all know now how to create a variable, you can also create more variables as you want. You can create another variable, whatever thing you want it to call it. Uh, could be some, because you realize if a game like, uh, let me give uh, an example of this common game, Candy Crush. Candy Crush has got uh, scores, that it has got levels. So you can always create different, uh, Variables, probably level, let's say level, 
then uh, maybe if the score touches four, the level gets to two, you go to level two, something like that. You can always create own variables because you realize um, variables are just values that are constant. You all know that. So while vari variables are only mentioned explicitly in, in the sixth class mathematical exam, can also be seen at your younger levels. Like you can see now, as you're doing the scratch, you can see you can create different. Um, so in this case, I'm leaving out the level going to be part of your quiz to put different levels on whatever score you've reached and also to show me how you do show the win and the lose. Uh, any other question before I get share the next slides, please? Okay, Salim, we shall be able to do that. So let me hope everyone knows how to create a variable now. You can always set your variable to whatever you want it. You can always change the variable. You can always show your variable and you can always hide your variable. As I've shown you, you can always show it by clicking on that and hide it by clicking on that. When you show a blue tick, that means it is seen. When it's empty, that means you've hidden it. So in this case, I've not uh, completed this because I wanted you guys to do it yourselves and uh, help out. <clears throat> so in this case, you're going to create variables uh, called lives. For whatever sprites you chose, you're going to have a uh, start with five lives. Each time the sprite touch, uh, we lose a life. So in this case, the runner will be the one losing, but the cut will be getting a score so you can change the variable from the cut side of it all that and also put it back to the runner then we need to create a program tell the price what to do right Edit, you seem to be muted. <laughs> Edit. Can you hear me? Then we can hide the surprise at the end of the game. Edit. Hello? Uh, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me, guys? At one point, are you well? There's a hand from us. And now, he moves. Yes, Felix. Hello. Can Felix, you... if you're speaking, we can't hear you. Yes, Joel. Oh, uh, he... Felix. Joel, all... you're breaking. Interest. You're Time. breaking. Can anyone else hear Joe? Because I cannot hear him. Tim, are you there? Yes. Juma, you can uh, hear Joe. Okay, someone says yes. Does anyone? So yes, I they can hear you. All right. Time. We can stop it. Uh, my son has, and uh, maybe continue to.
experience but in the whatsapp have a talk the participants uh, we have and is what so i from one instant we a test pledge who has some hitches that want to follow and did you want maybe summarize Actually, i wanted them to it's kind of uh, g uh do uh after here maybe when they are doing some practice so that they can be able to maybe create more variables switching from different levels as they are working upon their projects and also showing uh, who mm. wins and who loses they choose who will, who should win and who should lose from their chases and uh, runners and also be able to do practice from whatever they've been doing is going to be yes that sign are going to be a sign and you can all to get a uh, is around to uh, keep hands it's only and uh, since it comes to is uh, so much X. Me, please. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, Felix. Oh, my yes. goodness. Yeah. Yes, I think Joel is really breaking. I know what he's trying to say, but we cannot really hear him. Um, thanking everyone for joining, and as he has requested, uh, Edith. Edith, you've done a very good job there um, with that uh, session taking us through everything. And I think um, let, let's just uh, bring it to the end at this stage. And then I will take it up from here next week and work with the teachers. Yes, you might need to do some recap in short videos that you might share in the WhatsApp group um, so that we can continue experimenting with the tools. But thank you very much, everyone. Um, uh, Edith, I don't know, you, Joel was requesting if you can do a recap. And that other activity where you're saying they can do the... <clears throat> What is it called? They can do more variables uh, where the cat is and the mouse are running after each other. Um, I think what you can do, you can make that as an assignment. I think that's what Joel was trying to say. And then you can go practice uh, practice that. Hopefully we'll be able to. We'll be able to, you know, come together with that as a, our own project that we'll have worked on. But otherwise, on behalf of Joel <laughs> and Edith, this has been a good session spanning close to two hours. And that is because of your grit and your uh, hard work, just retaining and sustaining the rigor through the learning period. We started as 24, we are now at 16. It means that eight people have left us. And because of, first of all, of internet maybe, but also because the time is so much uh, spent. Um, thank you, Edith. Um, I would like to give you a moment to say a word and then we close it at that stage. Edith, your mic is off. Okay. Um. Thanks for everyone uh, attending, and also uh, we shall be able to share the slides with you people so that you can do more practice. But you can as well also do the uh, explore and see different projects uh, that have been done, and also work upon on that and do more practice. Yeah, because practice makes perfect, as you all know. Uh, thanks for attending and see you soon in the next uh, class. Felix. Amazing, 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 Edith. Thank you very much for leading us in that powerful session. I like your speed. Um, you you are up to the task. You just go slowly by slowly with your learners, checking in on each and every one of them. And you've not been able, if you have not been able to do so, please, please um, ensure, um, ensure kindly that you know you follow up of course the slide will be shared with you but it can never be the same especially when you're interacting 
I think we might get those cold snippets and uh, my friend uh, uh, Edith might share her project so that you can also build something around the same thing and also increment what we call remixing. It's something that I'll, it's something I'll be looking at in the next session so that we build a bigger, uh, I mean, like we continue growing in this area. Otherwise, thank you very much, everyone. At this particular juncture, I want to call upon Mr. Uh, Mr. Tim to conclude that prayer. All right, uh, as we wait for Tim, we'll see if Faith Kenya, are you here? Kona internet po unaza tuambea leo? Faith? And if Faith is not there, I'm going to ask Juma Mish to pray for us. It's very late in the night, so it's expected. Okay, Juma Mish. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the question, for our facilitator, for enabling us to go through the session. We pray that you give us wisdom, you give us guidance, and you let us be able to implement what we've learned today. In the name of Allah, I pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And please do have a, yourselves a good night. Some assessment assignments coming through from teacher Edith. And thank you very much, teacher Edith, once again. Amen. Amen. Good night. Good night.